Meta just released their fresh and new mixed reality headset priced at $499. Wow, that costs more than both Xbox and PS5. But would you like to spend that money on a mixed reality headset? That's not it. There are more announcements as well that talk about how Meta is planning to revolutionize AI usage. So to cover everything, let me formally start the video. As I told you, Meta released its new mixed reality headset. But did you know what became the talk of the town? Not its specifications. Not its form factor, not its price, but as strange as it may sound, its comparison with an unreleased competitor, Apple's Vision Pro. Why? Because Mark Zuckerberg has referred to the Quest 3 as the first mainstream mixed reality headset, considering he could say it just because he was selling it for less money. But since Vision Pro is not available, one thing I can say after watching a million videos of people giving it a try, for $500, the Quest provides the best virtual reality experience. It's unclear though who should shell out the extra cash for the Quest 3, given that Meta is still peddling its predecessor by almost $200. But the point here is, why is it so pricey? As compared to Quest 2, obviously, not Vision Pro. Well, that is because there are improvements in design, screen quality, and performance. Should Meta's alternative even be considered by the Vision Pro faithful, while Apple irons out its kinks? Well, my answer is no. Why? Because, since some YouTube creators had the privilege to try Vision Pro. Their reviews tell that Vision Pro is truly mind-blowing. MKBHD in his video told that the two-finger tap control is both seamless and ergonomic, and the interaction between real and virtual worlds was seamless, which is not the case with Quest 3, because your movements might disturb its sensors, resulting in halos in front of your eyes. But that does not mean you cannot read or see what's on your phone if you have the headset on. Even if Meta's advertising hasn't convinced you that the Quest 3 is best used for for mixed reality. The inclusion of two RGB cameras and a depth projector should. The new headgear does an outstanding job of accurately gauging how close or far away an object is, and it also does a better job of replicating your environment in full color. Still, with some gimmicks though, as I discussed earlier, but still, it's a giant leap if you talk about Quest 2. But you are spending $200 more. So, what else are you getting? Well, Xbox Cloud Gaming is coming to the headset, and similar to the classic arcade game Space Invaders, a new game First Encounters features aliens that burst through your defenses and must be destroyed using your weapon of choice. A player of this game documented his review about the game, saying, Having meticulously plotted my entire living room space for gaming, the sight of simulated cracks in my ceiling brought a broad grin to my face within seconds. I didn't have to tiptoe or worry about running into things because the pass-through was so precise. Um, what more? Well, the Quest 3 now has the 4K Plus Infinity Display pancake lenses that were previously only available on Meta's more expensive VR headset. This not only improves the sharpness and detail of text and images, but also increases the field of view, or how much of the screen you can see from one corner to the other. The new Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 drives the screens, cameras, and all the sensors, which means that Quest 3 boasts twice as much graphic performance than the Quest 2. In order to see how the Quest 3 differs from the Quest 2, you can play games from the Quest 2 on it. The new headgear also incorporates 3D spatial audio, an advanced surround sound technology that greatly improves the quality of VR and MR experiences. So, with all the discussion about the headset out of the way, don't you think Mark Zuckerberg is perhaps the only person with so much interest in living in a virtual world? Why is it so? Well, to make things simple, he is not interested in metaverse, he is interested in business. He would lose a cool 10-20 to 20 billion dollars to get a strategic upper hand, but will not give in in front of Apple. Yes, Apple. Since 2014, when Apple CEO Tim Cook criticized Facebook for using Tracker for ad targeting, tensions have been high between the two companies. Things went from bad to worse last year, when Apple released an operating system upgrade that encouraged consumers to reject tracking by apps. Social media sites that relied on advertising revenue took a major hit, with Facebook taking the biggest hit at $10 billion. During a conference call with analysts on Wednesday to discuss Facebook parent company Meta's third quarter results, which missed forecasts and sent company shares tumbling 20% to a six-year low, CEO Mark Zuckerberg made multiple references to Apple, with analysts pressing Zuckerberg for an explanation
confirmation of his decision to expand expenditure on the metaverse, not just this year, but throughout 2023. The call approached conflict at times. But you know, metaverse is not the only way Mark is trying to protect himself and his company from bankruptcy. He is also investing in AI. So, let us look at some of the AI-related announcements from the MetaConnect 2023 event. To start off, Meta is releasing its own AI development tool. Mark claimed that the company is doing it to help businesses and individuals create artificial intelligence chatbots for use across Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger. He claimed that from now on, businesses will be able to create AIs that reflect their brand's values and improve customer service experiences. Mark's claims also made it clear on stage that e-commerce and customer service are the company's primary areas of focus. AI Studio will launch an alpha, and Meta promises that it will expand the toolkit in years to come. Meta has announced that, in addition to AI Studio, it will release a sandbox tool in the coming year that would enable anyone to experiment with creating their own AI. In the future, AIs built in AI Studio will be able to power NPCs in a variety of metaverse games and experiences thanks to the sandbox's integration with Horizon Worlds and the rest of Meta's metaverse platforms. Meta has also made a chatbot that can help users with generally anything. It will serve as a relay between all meta-based apps. The model in play here is the same old Llama 2, which, to be honest, I think is not as powerful as GPT from OpenAI. Even in the past, it has shown biases and other turnoffs that make me feel a little worried. But now, it is the time for my favorite announcement from the day. Yes, I am talking about the new $299 Meta-powered Ray-Bans. To be frank, nothing about the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses is revolutionary. In 2013, the first commercially available smart glasses, Google Glass Explore Edition, were released. Snap, Bose, Razer, Epson, Amazon, and now the defunct Focals by North are just some of the numerous major and small brands that have hopped on the bandwagon since then. Most were disappointing in some way, be it through their potato cameras, washed out screens, ineffective voice assistants, or average microphones. I couldn't picture the typical consumer desiring to acquire a pair, but why I like these is because I can get meaningful information without having to look like an alien by putting something like Quest 3 on. The camera's resolution has increased from 5 megapixels to 12 megapixels. Videos can now be recorded in 1080p at 30 frames per second. Images can now be captured at 3024 by 4032 pixels. Call quality has been improved because of the addition of four more microphones. The quality and volume of the speakers has also increased, which means more deeper bass, less bleed, and 3D sound processing. They programmed in AI so you can now broadcast in real time to social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. But this is exactly where the fairy tale ends. The AI assistant on the glasses sucks. During my research for the video, I haven't heard one reviewer say anything good about the assistant. It's still laggy and lacks contextual understanding. I'm happy that Meta didn't try to implement a smart screen. Current technology simply isn't adequate. Since such displays typically employ projection technology, it is readily overpowered by strong background illumination. The majority of graphical user interfaces also call for a physical control mechanism. It's cumbersome, drains the battery quickly, and creates the challenge of establishing an ecosystem for more apps. Subscribe to Innovella, where I try all my might to bring the latest and greatest from the AI world. Some of the best videos that I have made for you so far are on your screens. Click now, and I will catch you there in a second.